Last November, Microsoft announced that they're going to be bringing a little bit of the metaverse into the Teams experience through a platform they call Microsoft Mesh, announced earlier last year. The vision is of a fully immersive 3D environment where you can move around within a space and collaborate with others within Microsoft Teams in a virtual world. But the plan initially is to start by allowing you to attend your Teams meetings as an avatar in the gallery, and we hope that we'll start seeing this arrive about the summertime of 2022. But what if I said that you could start attending your meetings today as an avatar for free? In this video, I'm going to show you how you can work in VR with virtual monitors, attend your Teams meetings as a virtual avatar, using an Oculus Quest 2 headset, an app called Immerse, and a little bit of courage if you plan on doing this in public. All right, let's get weird. Okay, so I'm in my Oculus Quest 2 headset and I'm in the, the home environment, which right now this is, I believe, the studio room. And I've gone through the, uh, the settings right here inside of the Oculus menu. I went down to experimental and I brought my desk into VR right here. And by doing that, I have, um, I've basically traced my desk with the controller so I know where the desk is in physical space. And I've got my, um, my keyboard and mouse in front of me. They're attached to my laptop using Bluetooth, just as you normally would do. And we're gonna use an application here that I've installed from the Quest store for free called Immersed VR. So if we open up this app, it's gonna use a helper application in order to connect to my MacBook Pro and stream that operating system into my headset so that I can see the monitors, I can use my mouse and keyboard on the host computer and um, get work done. So I'm gonna go ahead and launch this application and that's gonna bring us into a new virtual world or a new virtual room where we can connect to that local computer on my local network. So this is logging in you know, with my immersed account and I'm getting into the room. The room that I've selected is, I believe it's called like the Alpine Ski Chalet or something like that. So it's a uh, it's an Alpine environment that has um, snow going, uh, you know, over here in the window. We can see mountains out there. If we look over to the the left, we've got some artwork. If we look over to the right, we've got um, a little fireplace going. And I've connected to my computer right here with that little helper application. So I wanna show you what that looks like. I've got the menu right here and I've connected to my computer using my pairing code and I'm using something called Wi-Fi Direct which I'll talk about here near the, the end of the, uh, the video. And um, I'm only at four milliseconds of latency getting about 70 frames per second uh, in this experience. And inside of here I'm in this uh, this room by myself. I can go into a public room if I want to, and nobody sees my monitors. I'm just around other people if I choose to do that. And I can whiteboard, I can start a webcam, do a keyboard, all of those types of things. But I'm gonna talk about some of those in a little bit here. What I've got in front of me is I've got two virtual monitors, but these are actually the physical screens that are on my MacBook Pro right now. I've got over here, to the left-hand side is my 13-inch MacBook Pro screen. It's, uh, I think it's 1400 by 900 resolution. And um, I can make it curved if I want to, or I can make it flat. If I make it curved, I can adjust the level of curve if I want to, so I don't have to move my head quite so much to see back and forth. I kind of like it flat though. And I can move it around in space wherever I want further away or closer to make it a little bit bigger. And I can lock it right in place. That looks like a pretty good spot. So I can go ahead and pin it right there. Over here to the right, I've got my 34 inch ultra wide Dell display. And it's it, I think it's uh, 2560 by 1440, I believe, resolution. And you can see that I've got my Mac uh, dock over there on the side. I've got a browser up. I can also curve this monitor if I want to, so I can click on this 
little slider and I can curve it so I can see a little bit better without having to move my head quite as much. I'm gonna leave it flat. And then underneath this, I can click the plus button. I'm not gonna do it now because I, I kind of like just a dual screen setup, but I could click the plus button and I could add other virtual monitors to this environment to have a total of five displays available to me. And this is really cool because if you go on the go with just your laptop and a headset, you could sit down at like a desk that doesn't have any equipment at it, connect to your laptop through your Oculus Quest headset, and then you could have virtual monitors in this virtual world that aren't physically represented by your laptop, but your operating system sees them as real monitors, real displays for that computer. So you can rearrange the displays in whatever order or layout you want. You can move your windows around and they actually snap to those locations properly because the operating system sees them as if they were real monitors hooked up. So as I said, you can have up to five of these monitors in your virtual room if you want to, if you're at the right paid tier. If you're free, you're just using the free level, you can have one virtual monitor on top of your physical displays. Um, so you can add one extra one, you can blow up the resolution as much as you want to, and uh, you can do all of that for free if you would like. So if I put down my controllers, you don't need your controllers in order to, to navigate in this space because they've enabled hand tracking. So I've got my hands just out here in the open, and you can see that I can click and hold my index fingers and my left thumb, my left index finger, left, left thumb, to bring up that menu. And then I can move around and I can click, you know how you kind of like pinch to click. I can click to close that. If I bring up this one, I can hold my fingers there and I can get the little quick Oculus menu if I want to. So there the Oculus menu came up and I can hit resume to get back into this uh, immersed environment. Let's go ahead and hit resume. And my hands right now are enabled, which means that I have little pointers. I have these little, uh, these little, you know, like laser beams coming off of my hands. And with that, I can unpin, I can move around this monitor and I can pin it again, but I don't want to accidentally move things around. So I need to deactivate my hands. And to deactivate your hands, what you do is you touch either one of your thumbs to your ring finger. So on my right hand or my left hand, I can simply tap and now my hands have turned slightly gray and I'm not gonna accidentally grab something and move it around because my hands are disabled. Another helpful thing that I've found in this environment is that there's a little quick menu if you look at your wrist as if you had like a watch on your wrist. If you look at your wrist, you're gonna see the percentage of your uh, headset that you have left, what the time is, and how long you've been in your VR session. So you can tap to bring up this little quick menu, and that's where you can mute your microphone, you can hide your screen. So if I reactivate my fingers, I can hide my monitors and I can just look around my space and I can show my monitors, I can unpin all of my monitors if I want, and I can open up the menu by clicking on the little menu button. Finally, I can just close that little quick menu to make it go away. I can again disable my hands and then now I can grab onto my mouse and keyboard. If you're watching on my camera, I'm just using my Keychron mouse or my Keychron keyboard, my Logitech MX Master 3 mouse. They're connected to my MacBook Pro over Bluetooth and I can move around in this space. I can grab this window, I can move it over to this other display, I can snap it there, make it full screen. And this is the website that you're gonna to go to to download the helper application for your Mac, PC, or Linux computer. You'll go to immersed.com, and then if you click download for free, that's gonna come up to where you can basically set up your pairing code and then download the, uh, the helper application for your computer. Now. I've already done that. So up here at the top, I have this little immersed icon and I'm gonna show the window so that I can get to this area to see that I'm connected right now. If I go to my menu, then I can bring up the settings 
and I can launch it at login so I don't forget to launch the little connection helper. I can add virtual screens here from this menu. I can enable audio, which means I'm gonna hear my computer sounds through my virtual or through my physical headset through the head strap uh, speakers that are, that are on either side of my uh, temple. So that's the audio. You can enable brightness if you want to, and you can even turn down the brightness on your laptop so nobody can see what's on your screen. You just see it in VR and you, you know, maintain your privacy that way. And then, you know, you can do like what, what resolution do you want, stuff like that. So that's the little helper application. If I just close it, it's running in my menu bar. I don't have to think about it again. So the special thing when it comes to Microsoft Teams or Zoom or WebEx or whatever conferencing solution you're using is that you have the ability to have a virtual webcam inside of this space. So what we're gonna do is I've got a meeting running over here in the uh, Contoso environment. We have Megan Bowen and her best friends all in a meeting together. And I'm gonna join this meeting using my Mac version of the uh, desktop Teams app as a virtual avatar so that people can see, you know, my representation as a virtual being inside of this virtual space. So I'm gonna go ahead and join this meeting from my Teams app on my laptop over here on the side. I'm gonna bring this into this window so it's captured by Camtasia. And I would select my headset, whatever you know, headset you have attached, speakerphone, uh, AirPods, whatever you're gonna be using. You attach that as normal. And then you're gonna turn on your virtual camera with the immersed camera. So over here under camera, I have my cam link too, which if I do that, that is this. And I don't want people to see me with my headset on. I wanna attend this as an avatar. Well, the immersed application, that little helper app, that installs a virtual camera for you called immersed webcam right here. So if I select that, I see my virtual environment, but I'm not in it yet. So in the app, I need to enable the virtual webcam from the menu inside of the Oculus Quest headset. So I'm gonna open up my little menu right here by tapping on that. And then I'm gonna unlock my hands, go into the menu. And inside the menu, there's the virtual webcam right here. So I'm gonna turn that on and this little eyeball pops up in front of me and I can grab it with my hands and move this around in whatever angle I want to be. So if I'm gonna be looking at this screen right here, my laptop screen, I wanna put that you know, near the middle so I'm making about the best eye contact and I can pull it closer or I can push it farther away by just grabbing it with my hand and moving it around this virtual space. So I can say that that looks pretty good. People can see my hands Again, I'm gonna disable my hand so I don't move anything accidentally. And then I'm gonna hit join now, and I'll be brought into this meeting with Megan, Miriam, Nestor, all of the people from Contoso as a virtual avatar right here in the lower corner. And now if I go back over to Megan's view, this is what she sees. She sees that John has joined this meeting as an avatar wearing my headset and she sees a digital virtual representation of John. And if I go ahead and pin this, then the microphone, if I turn on my headset here, so if I put on my actual headset and unmute myself, then as I'm talking, they would hear what I'm saying through a proper Microsoft Teams certified um, audio headset device that has active noise canceling, all of that cool stuff. And basically, um, you know, the gestures that I make, you can see in real time, all of my, my hand tracking, if I do like a thumbs up or something like that, you see that inside of this virtual webcam um, transmitted back to the laptop and then that's your camera inside of Microsoft Teams. So that's how you would attend a Teams meeting inside of VR as a virtual avatar representation of yourself 
before Microsoft Mesh comes out um, and gives us their, their representation of avatars. Now, a couple of tips that I've, that I've found over this process. One is if you go over, um, if you notice any kind of lag and you have ethernet available to you, then what you're going to want to do if you're on a Mac is you're going to want to set up something called network sharing. So if I go into my, my network preferences here, let's see where it, where it comes up. If I go into the uh, sharing menu on system preferences, then what you're gonna do is you're gonna turn on internet sharing and you'll be sharing your ethernet connection through your Wi-Fi connection. So your Wi-Fi will broadcast a, um, a, an SSID for you to join from your Oculus Quest headset. So I call this John's computer or John's MacBook, I think. And then I was able to connect to John's MacBook's Wi-Fi, and now I'm directly connected to my computer, and my computer's ethernet is sharing the internet to my headset through that wireless connection. So that gives me a rock solid local network connection to my laptop without having to be tethered to it. I'm gonna take my headset off now. Another thing that I found is whenever I was using just the stock uh, facial interface for the headset and the um, I had the Elite strap before, I found it pretty uncomfortable to sit in this environment for more than maybe about 30 minutes at a time because it was squeezing my face and it was really hot and um, it, it kind of made you motion sick after a while. So what I did was I added um, two uh, accessories to this setup that really increased the comfortability to where I can sit in this basically, you know, from the beginning of the day until lunch, I can take a break to eat lunch, and then I can get back in after lunch and, and be in this super focused virtual environment. And the two accessories that I bought, the first one is the head strap. It's called the Bobo VR um, M2 Pro head strap. And the Pro one, the reason why it's Pro is because it has this additional magnetic battery with it as well. So the Oculus Quest, it's rated for somewhere around like three hours, I think, of battery life. And then this head, this uh, extra battery gives you another three hours of playtime. So you can turn on the battery and you can basically attach it. And since it's magnetic, you don't have to take off the head strap. And this will charge the battery up again and then the battery can drain again. And you can buy the headset, uh, the strap was like $60, and the um, the batteries, they're like $30 a piece. So you could buy even an extra battery and have it as a hot spare to, um, to have it fully charged up, pop that off, stick it on the back of the head strap, and then start charging the dead battery and kind of like um, keep them going so that you basically always have a charge. You don't have to plug in physically. The other thing that I added to to increase the comfort is this facial interface right here. The one that the Oculus comes with is a little bit hot. It doesn't have good ventilation or anything. And this one is by a company called Kiwi Design. And it's a like a leatherette finish. So it's a little bit more comfortable on your face. It's a lot softer. It has a little nose guard right here, which allows... Uh, for blocking of light so you don't get light coming up through the nose hole kind of distracting you it's a more immersive environment because um, you don't have light bleed and the real the thing I really like about this one over some of the other options that I looked at is there's little vents along the top right here and little vents along the bottom so I have airflow going through the headset and air that's you know touching my face so I don't feel quite as trapped or quite as uncomfortable and hot after um, being in VR for a pretty long period of time. So the head strap and the facial interface, they increased the, uh, the longevity and the comfort of being in this immersive environment um, quite a bit. And then using Wi-Fi Direct whenever I'm at home and I have an Ethernet connection, that added to my ability to, um, to reduce lag. Now, when I went into the office, I was able to just use Wi-Fi and that worked out just fine too because to be honest the the floor in the building I was in was um, was basically completely empty 
So there wasn't a lot of, you know, congestion on the Wi-Fi. It worked out really good. And I really liked that because I had just my laptop. I didn't have to find a monitor and plug it in or do anything like that. I was able to just sit all day with my laptop, keyboard, and mouse, have my headset on, and um, and work all day with virtual monitors as if I was at home. I could enjoy these huge screens uh, inside of uh, the VR environment. So um, I think longer term, like after the world starts coming back into the office and there's more people around, I think, you know, I would be more hesitant to do something like that in public because it certainly feels weird if I heard footsteps I started to feel really self-conscious about, you know, somebody like seeing me with a headset on as I'm working, you know, cause, uh, it, it's definitely goofy looking to the other person. But, um, as far as like being able to focus inside of an environment like this, bring up multiple windows, still even just listen to music from my Mac, from Spotify played through the speakers in my headset. Um, it was a really nice experience and it was a lot more, seamless than I would have imagined, um, without actually having trying it out, having tried it out for myself. So I hope this video helps at least share something interesting and something quite a bit different that you can do. If you're willing, uh, and you have the right hardware to do it, you can try out being an avatar in your meetings today. So, um, give it a try. If you have an Oculus headset and you want to try the immersed application, uh, let me know in the comments what you think. What did people react? How was their um, their initial thoughts on seeing you as an avatar join a meeting? I'll say that from my experience, what I noticed is um, basically the first five minutes of every meeting I joined, um, people were you know laughing at the idea. They thought it was really weird and said that it was like uncomfortable to see just a floating head talking. Um, but I asked people at the end of the meeting when I was doing this, these experiments, I was asking people like what they thought by the end of the meeting. And most of the people that, that gave me feedback said that about 30 minutes into the meeting, they kind of got over the idea that it was an avatar in the gallery. I think they kind of looked past it and, you know, it, it wasn't so uh, weird to them by the end of like the first meeting that we had together. Um, but it's kind of jarring the next meeting that they join with you. So it's, it's like people, uh, kind of like notice it and have a adverse reaction to it initially. And then it kind of becomes a little bit normalized over the course of the meeting. And I think that initial freak out at the beginning will get shorter and shorter over time as this kind of becomes more normalized. So, um, maybe don't do this with a, a customer or a client, but if you have colleagues that you want to kind of mess with a little bit, or you want to do a social experiment to get a preview of how the world is probably going to react whenever Microsoft mesh avatars come into teams and lots of people start using them and it becomes a meme. Um, if you want a preview of what that feels like or what that looks like, check out the immersed application on your Oculus two headset. And again, let me know what you think. If there's anything else you want me to try, or if you have any questions about um, tips and tricks I've learned along the way, let me know. And uh, we'll see how long I keep doing this experiment with uh, VR inside of a uh, inside of a meeting environment. So that's all I've got for this one. <laughs> it's, it's quite a departure. It's quite different. Um, but thank you for watching. I hope you have a great day.